Welcome to BigCountryPreps.com. I'm Evan Wren, and this is the Countdown to Two-A-Day series, our daily look at an area football team and the key questions we'll be answering about that team in our August 16th preseason preview here at Big Country Preps. I'm with my partner, Dan Youngblood, via Zoom. And Dan, we're talking about the San Saba Armadillos today. Yeah, and this is a kind of an interesting team. They went six and four last year, missed the playoffs, uh, went two and four in district. Uh, they return exactly same number of Littermen as they lose, 12 on both sides, return six starters on both sides of the football, uh, and then return uh, or bringing up call ups from a five and five JV team. So there's a, this is a team that you expect to be competitive. The question is, can they get up, you know, to the next level and get back into the playoff picture? But I think that uh, there's reason to be excited about this team. They return a nice nucleus of players, but they also have a lot of question marks and a lot of young kids. They're going to be stepping into key roles. So this is one of those teams with a lot of questions. And we'll talk about a few of those that we're going to try to answer in our preview here in just a few minutes. Before we jump into today's edition of the Countdown to Two-A-Day series, I want to remind you YouTubers to please hit the subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button and then hit that little bell that will pop up after you hit that subscribe button so you'll receive notifications from YouTube whenever we come up with a new podcast here at Big Country Preps that will make it very easy for you to follow our Countdown to Two-A-Day series uh, during which we will examine one team per day from the area all the way up to the outset of, of preseason workouts. Looking at it all one day at a time and counting it down. And it's man, that's right around the corner, Dan, when it starts. Yeah, no question. Let's go ahead and jump into today's team, the San Zab Armadillos. And I kind of mentioned it. This is going to be a young team. It's going to be a team with, with limited depth, uh, but there is a good nucleus there. So I think one of the big questions, I think, right off the bat, and I think it's it's this is true of all 2A teams, but when you're when you're in a situation where you're leaning so hard on a few kids, I think it's even more of one, is can they stay healthy? I think with, with limited depth, I think it's going to be very important that their key players manage to, to you know, answer the bell week in and week out. Because if you start to lose some key players, you're relying on some kids that are uh that are that are young and inexperienced to fill some of those roles so i think with with this with this san saba team health is going to be of the utmost importance and and just really developing some depth as well they're going to have to have some of these jv kids step in and find a way to to contribute i think one of the big questions or the big keys for san saba this year will be the offensive line i know coach aguirre likes that offensive line of his but when you have all these youngsters coming up it sure is nice to have an offensive line that is, you know, giving you that consistent push and taking pressure off uh, the the skill personnel. And if they can get that, that'll be a huge, a huge factor in their success. And that kind of leads into the third question, and that's at the quarterback position. They're going to have a, a new quarterback kind of making a switch over to that position in, in senior Lane Miller. And I think it, I mean, his pro- progress is going to be really important for for the success that Coach Aguirre's team has. I mean, they're going to have to find a way – uh, to to move the ball offensively, and they're, you got you got to have a quarterback that that can run your offense to do that. Uh, one interesting thing, uh, they got Webb Murphy coming over, had previously head coach at uh, Monday to to be the offensive coordinator. That'll be kind of an interesting deal, and uh, that quarterback position will will be important. Now, one 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 big advantage he's going to have is that offensive line, and he returns uh, in his backfield a a thousand yard rusher and Ethan Gonzalez. But at the same time, you're going to need your trigger man to make plays. And that's going to be a big question. Is is Lane Miller Miller ready to step into that role and be that that leader they need him to be? And that, that makes that offensive line all the more important. When you're breaking in a new signal caller, get that push up front, get some yards on the ground, take pressure off of them. That is such a big key. No uh, I think that I, I think the Dillos will go as far as our offensive line takes them this year. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's take a quick look at their schedule. They've got to uh, open up the non-district with a road date at Florence on August 25th before coming home on September 1st to face Junction. Then they go uh, host Jun- Johnson City on the 8th of September and host El Dorado on the 15th of September. So you look at that non-district schedule with three home games, a favorable deal there where you got an opportunity to to, to play uh, to play in front of your home crowd and maybe get a good start and some momentum into district. All right, jumping into district play, uh, since Ebo will host Hamilton on September 22nd, they'll visit Coleman on September 29th, they'll host DeLeon on October the 6th, and that's going to be a big game for both of those clubs. A road date at Bangs will come on October 13th, home date against Goldthwaite on the 20th, and after an open date, they will close at Toller on the 2nd of November. And I think that's an interesting schedule. This is an interesting district because I think you've got two clear favorites at the top in Coleman and Toller. But after that, I think it's a pretty wide open race with with three or four, maybe three or four teams that think they have a shot at that fourth, third or fourth playoff spots. And San Saba is certainly one of those. So I'm interested to see how that, that race plays out. 
All right. And with that, it's about time to wrap up today's edition of the Countdown to Two-A-Day series, the San Saba Armadillos. But before we do that, we want to remind you that on August 16th, that's the big day here at Big Country Preps. That's the day we release our annual preseason football preview. And it's the most comprehensive look at Big Country football uh, from any media source that you're going to get. Uh, we'll have more than 40 player features, more than 40 uh, team previews. We'll have stats. We'll have opinion pieces. We'll have predictions. We'll have videos. You name it. Don't forget to jump on board for August 16th. In the meantime, thank you for joining us for this episode of our Countdown to Two-A-Day series. And make sure you come back tomorrow when we will be moving to Class 3A to feature the Ballinger Bearcats here at BigCountryPreps.com.